the first topic we have tonight is, of course, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and the Brooklyn Nets drama that's going on. It started with Kyrie Irving. So, yeah, just give it a timeline, right? It started with Kyrie Irving saying, essentially, I'm not sure if I'm going to opt in. I want a long-term contract. And his leverage to that was if the Nets weren't going to give him a long-term contract, then you guys might lose Kevin Durant as well. You're not just going to lose me. You're going to lose KD. And then Kyrie opts in. So you start thinking like, oh, okay, it might all be, it might all be all right. A day after Kyrie opts in, two days, after, like whatever it is, maybe a little bit later, Kevin Durant requests the trade. Now Kevin Durant wants out of Brooklyn, and it sets the entire NBA world on fire. More than half the teams are called, and the Nets want two all-star level players and a bunch of future picks. King's ransom for KD, which makes all the sense in the world. And, of course, if they trade KD, you have to assume that they're going to trade Kyrie Irving as well because there's no – I don't think the Nets want anything to do with Kyrie Irving. I think they would love to keep Kevin Durant but they don't want anything to do with Kyrie Irving and the headache that he's given them. And even the Nets owner, man, I don't think he said this on record, but it was a report that Joe Sy would essentially to have a team that he's quote unquote proud of and gets 40 or 45 wins. They just compete really hard as opposed to a team with the superstars, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, that that are going to more or less take over the team and try and run it like we've seen other NBA superstars do with their franchises. And it seems like Josiah is just not about that at all. And we'll get to that in a minute. But a report came out today where the Nets, they're pretty content with having Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving back on the team. They're actually like, the report I think it was from Woj said the Nets are operating as if Durant and Irving are going to be on the roster on opening day. Which is what I thought made the most sense in the world from Jump Street. We did a show maybe two weeks ago, and I was saying, hey, just run it back. Run the net situation back. I know it was an abject disaster last year. No doubt about it. You had Kyrie Irving miss all the games because of the vaccine mandates. James Harden was not playing, and then he was playing, and when he was playing, he wasn't playing very hard. He wanted to get the hell out of Brooklyn. You bring in Ben Simmons, who doesn't play at all, and then they get to the playoffs and get unceremoniously swept by the Boston Celtics. I understand all that. Horrible laughing stock. All the jokes running. NBA, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you can see them. But there's still a situation with the Brooklyn Nets where they're the best team in the Eastern Conference. Like, I know Kevin Durant wanted to get traded, and the trade destinations that were listed were Phoenix Suns and Miami Heat. If you keep this net situation together, that's a better situation to win than either Phoenix or Miami. So instead of Kyrie Irving and Ben Simmons, you're going to go hit your wagon to a 37-year-old Chris Paul and a Devin Booker who might not be all that excited about you taking some shots away from them, right? Like with Devin Booker and Chris Paul and even DeAndre Ayton, it's cool because Devin Booker still gets to take the most amount of shots. You know, Chris Paul is way more likely to feed Devin Booker than he is to shoot the ball himself. And now you add Kevin Durant to that mix, and I think Devin Booker's a great player, and obviously they've made the finals, they've won a round in the playoffs last year and made it to the second round. There's no guarantee in my mind that Devin Booker would be okay playing second fiddle to Kevin Durant. Like, I think Devin Booker wants to be that guy. I think Devin Booker has that Kobe mentality in him where he wants to be the man no matter what. He would, I think he would rather lose in the NBA Finals or like the Western Conference Finals being the man than he would being like the second banana on a championship team. This is my opinion. Obviously, I don't know, but it just seems like Booker has that Mamba mentality in him, if you will. And back to Brooklyn with next year, if you're going to look at it with rose-colored glasses or Coogee-colored glasses in, in honor of the the Biggie Smalls Brooklyn Nets jerseys. No mandates. I assume mandates are going to be in effect next year when the NBA season starts, which means Kyrie Irving 
should be able to play in at least, what, 41 more basketball games than he was able to last year. That's providing help, the health that's provided that nothing else weird with Kyrie comes up when he just says, nah, I don't want to play, which might very well happen. But the mandate shouldn't be an issue, so Kyrie should be available for a bunch more games, right? Ben Simmons is going to have basically two years of getting healthy, he should be able to start the regular season healthy and then play the entire way, which is going to help the Nets tremendously on defense. And it's going to help their offense as well, because you can get all the jokes off about Ben Simmons that you want. But Ben Simmons as a number three offensive option, a guy who, while he's not going to shoot the ball, he can obviously distribute the ball and he can drive to the basket anytime he wants. So he might be a little scared of getting fouled, which is true. But all the attention is going to be on Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving anyway, which is going to make Ben Simmons' job and his responsibilities on offense like way lesser. And I think he's just going to be in a more comfortable role than he ever was with Philadelphia. And then you have improved depth, right? The Nets have made some sneaky off signings. We're going to get to some other teams who have snuck around in the offseason and added to their team. The Nets have had a pretty cool. They haven't had a quiet offseason because of the Kyrie and Kevin Durant drama, but the moves that they made in the offseason have been quiet, if that makes any sense. So they re-signed Patty Mills. They traded for Royce O'Neal, who's a 3-and-D wing, and then they just picked up T.J. Warren, who would be a really good scoring option off the bench. So if you're looking at the Nets' top 10 players, you got Kyrie Irving, Joe Harris, Kevin Durant, Ben Simmons, Nick Claxton, and then their bench is Patty Mills, Seth Curry, Royce O'Neal, Cam Thomas, and TJ Warren. That's that's a really solid 10-man lineup. And I know the defense is still going to be an issue, but you are adding Ben Simmons back. I think Durant will be better as a like a help defender if Ben Simmons can make cause problems on the perimeter and KD can just help and use his length to alter shots, to block shots, to get in those different passes. And Royce O'Neal's a good defender as well coming off the bench. Now they'd still need help on that end, but I think you'd see a much better Brooklyn defense this year if all the guys were to actually play basketball than you did last year. One thing that the Nets really need to do and where it seems like all of this has stemmed from is their relationships with the front office. And it, there was another report, again, probably about a week ago, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving would actually not be opposed to playing with each other still. They just didn't want to do it in Brooklyn. So what well, that tells me, and I think that's what tells everybody, unless that's a lie, unless Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are butting heads, is that their problem doesn't stem with each other. Right? It's not Kevin Durant saying, oh, man, Kyrie, I trusted you, and then you went and you did all this vaccine stuff, and then you weren't able to play in the games, and by the time we got you back for the playoffs, we weren't anywhere near ready. That's not what that report would suggest. What that report would suggest is that there's problems with the front office, whether it's Sean Marks, Joe, Joe Steve Nash, who's the coach for the Nets, that there's something broken there. And I think that's really easy to fix, and if I'm the Nets, I know Joe Sy, we talked about his comment, where it seems like he he would rather be in charge of a mediocre team than be the backseat on a winning team. I think you just need to check yourself at that point. Like Your job as the owner is to bring a product to the fans that is a winner, right? If you're an owner of a professional team, your job, your goal, your mission, whatever you want to call it, should be to win as many games as possible and bring that city that you own that team in a championship. The best way for the Nets to do that is to keep this core together and, you know, obviously mix in the offseason signings that the Nets have already had, which I've already thought have done a, that they've done a pretty good job of. Now, I think those are going to be all for naught if Kevin Durant does end up getting traded and Kyrie Irving ends up being on the move, then you're going to have probably a a pretty bad team, right? Or a team that's maybe fighting for the play on playing six, seven seed in the Eastern conference, which they were last year. But as we talked about, that's because nobody was playing basketball for them. If all these guys had played even a respectable amount of games, the Nets would have been nowhere near the playing game 
I don't know that's really arguable, but I guess if you just really hate the Nuts that much, you'll probably think, no, they still would have been because of the defense and all these other problems that they had. If that's the opinion you want to have, fine, go for it. That's just It's just not one that I'm here for, and it's not one that I personally subscribe to. And back to, sorry, back to the front office. It, it seems like you just need to have a meeting, right, where everybody went in there and then they all hashed it out. Hey, here are our problems. Here's how we propose to fix it. And that's what it would have to be. Maybe the front office is really mad at Kyrie, which I could understand because he paid this guy to play in all these games. He didn't end up playing in the games. But I think you go in there and you say, this is what helps us win a championship. It is all of us together with x y and z right and i think they've already done a good job of trying to fill in some of those ancillary pieces and if they keep it together i think the nets can still be a really good basketball team next year and if i am the front office that's the pitch i would try to make to kevin durant and Kyrie irving because i want those guys on my team because i am trying to again win basketball games and in my opinion that is the best way to do it I'm a kid and you know I be on the way